Welcome back to the TV cast, the show where we talk about House of the Dragon for the time being. Yes! We talk about TV shows and streaming shows. It's a spin off of our real podcast, the Spoiler Cast. Uh, check us out. You can check that out right here where you're checking this out. It's on the same channel and everything. Um, today we're talking about Season 2, Episode 4. 4, yes. What was the name of the episode? I forgot. The Red Dragon and the Gold? Right, 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 right. I think, yeah. Yeah, and, um, well, the plot is, the war is still slowly starting. Yeah. Because I, <laughs> Kristen Cole, together with Sir Gwen Hightower, left, left the King's Landing last episode to kind of yeah. start their campaign of rallying troops, which I guess technically is the start of a war. But yes. what they're really doing is that yeah, they're 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 taking ground, they're rallying troops, um, for 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 the actual war. But I mean that's that's what yes. a war is. It's it's a, it's a collection of smaller battles. So it, technically, it has for started. the for the final battle, I suppose. Yeah, but it feels like it doesn't. Ha- it hasn't really started yet. Um, uh. and then and then, there's a lot of there's a lot of talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I felt like this episode went very fast for some reason. Well, because it was shorter. It was like ten minutes shorter than the last one. Uh, this I was guess. under an hour. So I'm very oh, happy. That's true. For, yeah, I I remember in the good old days when our TV, hour long TV, like dramatic TV, was forty two minutes. Yeah, Those, it was an hour with commercials. Exactly. Those were the days. And and half hour sitcoms were like 22, 21 minutes. That's still kind yeah. of a thing. They haven't really changed that too much. But now, like drama TV, like hour long TV. I mean, look at the next season of uh, uh, Stranger Things. I think they're doing like eight two hour movies, basically, or something like that. Wait, they're doing another season? Aren't they? I don't know. I haven't watched that show for years, so I don't know. But I, I stopped I, I, after I, season two. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Season one, season two, really good. Season three was. God awful. I don't even remember what season three was about. It's the one where they open the mall and the Russians show up. I don't know. I don't know what it's about because I gave up halfway through. But that's oh, that's I might have watched in. that. Uh, hold on. And I don't. Then I don't remember what season two was. Whatever. <laughs> I'm mixing them up, obviously. Stranger Things. Yeah, last. Well, it's 2025. It says it's going to be the last year for it. Hopefully, because goddamn, can they stop milking that? <laughs> I know. Like, they solved the mystery. Do we need more? What was the mystery? I don't even know. Trying to figure out where uh, Eleven came from, wasn't it? Where but did that she was come solved from? in season one. It was? Yeah. Where did she come from? The, the research facility. Oh, yeah, sure. But what, what, what is the upside down? Do we care? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, it's a TV, know. It's a TV show, so you can just keep introducing new mysteries. Yeah, I guess. It's a TV show, so you can just keep, uh, you know, uh, making up new storylines. Yeah, that's true. We talked about we talked about this. We talked about it in our yet-to-be-published yet uh, uh, summer special episode for the spoiler cast. How right. things, well, we've talked about it before, also, but we talked about it more there. Um, you know, how things need to end, but people don't want things to end because people yeah. just, I think we talked about that in the last episode of this. People want that constant dopamine, ser- serotonin drip, like, oh, I just need more. So, so they, they don't technically care about quality or, you know, uh, story arcs. They just, oh, I want more. They don't, but, they, don't, they don't appreciate the art. They just want the drug. But... That's House you, of the Dragon. people, watching this. Yes, shut up. House <laughs> of the Dragon is so far keeping it... Keeping to the story, and I really enjoy this episode. Yeah, this was a good episode. <laughs> Mainly Trying though, because get it you ends... back into the episode. <laughs> sure, yes, yeah, sorry. It does end with a massive dragon battle with yes. three dragons involved. So you know, yes. I, and and I don't want to be one of those people, you know, who says, "Oh, finally the action!" But damn, <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. And um, I, I, plot twists, I guess. Because we need to discuss. I, I'm not entirely sure what actually happened there in the in that battle. Yeah. And uh, how 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 far, how soon do we want to spoil that? <laughs> we'll we'll hold like off five for spoilers. Yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll hold off spoilers for a little while. Um, 
and talk about what 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 happened. So the episode is, yeah, Kristen Cole is on his little, uh, uh, not crusade. Crusade. <laughs> it's on his mission. He's taking over castles um, between King's Landing and Dragonstone. Kind of, and the point is, he says to cut off Dragonstone on land so that it's uh, yes. you know, isolated. Meanwhile, Damon is uh, not doing anything in Harrenhal. He's, he's speaking like he's, out for some reason. He's dragging his feet. Yeah, well, now we know he might have been drugged. So That's true. Uh, or as the witch, the witch, as he calls her, claims, it might be the bed because it's made out of... Werewood. Yes, that was the word. Uh, and by, by, by the way... Um, uh, Stranger Things season five comes out. First episode comes in twenty twenty four, and then the rest comes in twenty twenty five. They're eight <sighs> episodes, so I'm guessing they're like two hours long. Anyway, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, that's 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 what's going on. I, the point was for him to kind of muster forces in Harrenhal, but it feels there's like, nothing there. Yeah, and I I like that. Uh, the witch lady kind of pointed that out that maybe it's just you know. After after his little tiff with uh, his wife slash uh, niece, yeah, <laughs> he kind of left like oh, in in what was the second episode, right? Yeah, after she found yeah. out he he uh, um he ordered he the what? killing of the child. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so well, he didn't order the killing of the child, but resulted his orders resulted in the killing of the child. <laughs> Well, he did want a child dead, just not that child. Yeah, he was just not very <clears throat> clear <laughs> on his intentions, I guess. Yeah. So I don't know. It feels like it feels like <laughs> as it pertains to this season, now we're that we're halfway through, it feels like they're kind of pushing him to the side. Like yes. cause what he's doing he's not doing anything. <clears throat> But then, then, no. then my cynical brain starts thinking, oh, so they're just setting up a separate storyline for the next season and the season after that for him. And this more and more and more and more and more starts resembling a TV show and not a, <laughs> not a, not a drawn out drama. Uh, I still like this episode though. Um, but I, and, and I mean, I mean, they, they hinted at, um, uh, that Alicent might be pregnant. Yeah, well, they didn't say anything, but strong in- indications. She was asking. I mean, she took the 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 tonic, or whatever they call it. So that's yeah. supposed to end the pregnancy. Yeah, and then she had cramps. So I guess that's that's a that's a side effect, I suppose. Yeah, because he said that you might not feel too good, the the Grand Meister. Yeah, but in terms of like. Over overarching changes to the to the story, like big big happenings. There's Nothing really, happened until the end. The end. So, and we, I think we need to talk. I mean, in order to talk about things, anything. That, yeah, we <laughs> kind of have to talk about the end, the 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 end battle. So, if you for some reason you're watching this without having seen the new episode, spoilers from here on out. <laughs> um. Because we're, we're yeah we're well gonna, we can we're gonna spoil the start the of the yeah so the start of the the battle is Cole has this idea yeah he's gonna take uh, I'm not entirely sure what his plan is like why take this I don't remember what it's called Rook's um, rest yeah Rook's rest well because it's it's the final it's the final castle they, I mean they're on the coast so after that the next one is Dragonstone so at this sure. point they have Dragonstone has no no fortifications. Um, between King's Landing and Dragonstone, there, there's nothing in between there now. So they just want that that stronghold to like be closer and not having to fight that before they fight Dragon. Yeah, because okay. Oh jeez. <laughs> I'm fine. It just I'm, I I fiddle with it, and it's one of those you just. Screw onto the table so it, it falls off. Anyway, so now you're holding it well, for the rest I, of the episode. I could fix it, but yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll do it gradually. Here it is. Um, <laughs> where was I? Yes. So, um, Renera's plan, or who? Uh, Renera. She was, doesn't have a plan. She really. doesn't really have a plan. She's she's just trying to avoid war, which I think is fine. 
Yeah, and I mean, she was she was still on her way back from um, King's Landing. King's Landing when they got all the information, basically. Yeah. When her when Damon's daughter, I don't remember which one, Bela. Bela. Um, started like, yeah, I can't control these dudes. Could you please? Could someone please help me? And asks Princess Rini's to uh, come and like talk for her or help her talk to the men. Because the men won't listen to a child or a young woman. Yeah. Yeah, they're very... Um, it, 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 it shows, though, um, which I, I always find funny when you have, like, a commander-in-chief, so to speak, like a king or a president, especially not like we have a king, because our king is basically just a, f- you know, figurehead. Oh, yeah, he's... He doesn't yeah. actually control Sweden. He represents no. Sweden in certain aspects. Um, but But here... Um, uh, or or like a captain of a ship, like the captain doesn't do anything. But what it, but when you think about it, um, why you why you you had adhere to such things, is because ultimately, um, uh, uh what's it called, ansvar. Uh, what's it called? The responsibility. Responsibility falls upon the king, the leader, you know, the president. Yeah. So, a, 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 and they are they are a symbol uh, of of the power. So, yeah. That's why they don't want King Egon to go up because if he falls like sure, like King's Landing is still like what? I don't know if you're hearing it, but I'm, my mic is picking up my cat going crazy oh, okay. outside. <laughs> no, it was it was just it was just cuz it feels a lot a lot of the times when you see kings or leaders or stuff in movies, it's just like uh it feels very symbolic. Yes. But here, here, the way they talked about it made, made it very clear, you know, what, what it actually means to have a king or a leader like that. They, they're, they're more than just a symbol. They, they, are, they, are, they are important in other aspects. Yeah. And especially when, it, when they're fighting for the throne of the, of, the, of the Seven Kingdoms. But they're also partially just a figurehead a little bit. Because, yes, you know, they're not too. really the ones who makes all the decision. I mean, no. they have to, like, put their final seal of approval, technically. Yeah. But a lot of their av- advisors, obviously, kind of just skirt around them or overrun them and do whatever the fuck they want. Yeah. <sighs> As we see in this episode specifically. <laughs> yeah. Um, so... Thought- yeah. No, go ahead. The, no the, the the final battle then, I suppose. Yes, exactly. So the battle is uh well, yeah. Cole had an idea. Unfortunately, <laughs> King Aemon kind of ruined that idea. King Aegon. Aegon, sorry. Yes. That also, uh, I mean, I I thought of it before, but it really was hammered home now when Kristen was talking. Your king is here. We 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 fight for yeah. King Aegon. His name is Egg. Oh yeah. Aegon. Egg. I mean, I yeah. kind of knew it, but when he said it like this, now like, oh, the the I, the king egg, his royal egginess. <laughs> I think they mentioned that in Game of Thrones. Oh, okay. That he's like, some one of the Aegons have the nickname Egg. <laughs> yeah. If I'm not misremembering. Anyway. Uh, which is just silly, but no. yeah. Yeah, I, Cole's plan was just to take over Rook's Nest, Rook's Rest. Well, no, and have uh, Aemond. Come with uh, uh, his giant dragon and, and like make it easy for them. Really? Oh, sure. That's true. So when he's because when he signals what? the flares, who's supposed to show up is Amund on his giant dragon Ve- Vegar. Vegar, right? Vegar. Yeah. However, just before he takes off, he notices ah that's Aegon and uh, some fire. Some fire. Shit. Well, I'm gonna wait. Yeah. However, and does he wait, you know, to see little... if 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 uh, his king can take care of it, or does he wait, you know, because he knows because he wants what that, happens uh, to happen? Rhaenys and her dragon, Ve 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 Maelys, right? Rhaelys and and Maelys, Rhaenys and Maelys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> does she know that she's a much better dragon rider than he is? I mean, the, the, based on what happens later, ooh, I don't know. Yes. I I don't know. Because here's, know here's what happens. Question. Yeah, Once we again, need to say it. If you, if you haven't seen it, 
you, you probably aren't watching. If you have seen it, I don't have to explain it. But yeah, uh, Eamon and Vagar attack uh, Rhaenys and Velis as they are attacking Aegon and Sunfire. Yeah. So Rhaenys' so he's, dragon he's has technically attacking Aegon's. The king. Yeah, they're like latched together. I don't know if if uh, Rhaenys' dragon is biting down on him or whatever. Yeah. And then Vagar just swoops in, shoots fire on both of them. Yeah. And that was causing also... Causing immense damage to both of them. Yeah. And that was also something... I, I, I was also thinking, like, yeah, like, dra- dragon dragon fighting is cool and all, but, I mean, the second you burn the rider, it's over. But yeah. then I remembered, and I, I, I think that is kind of explained there, because they're, they're being hit with a lot of fire. And they're more or less fine. Yeah, because they're Targaryen. Yeah, they, they don't they burn. Can withstand fire. I was like, oh. I, <laughs> I thought dragon fire might still be dangerous to them, but no, I guess not. It's but it's just fire, isn't it? I don't know. Is dragon fire different? In I this? mean, it melts stone. Well, regular fire doesn't really melt stone. Depends on how hot it gets. Sure, but like, I guess dragon fire is just hotter than. Yeah. Because like, even though it's I orange. think it's again in Game of Thrones, we see it actually like melt like chocolate. Well, is dragon fire different than regular fire in Game of Thrones, I suppose? (laughs) Yeah, you can't. In general, I don't know. (laughs) They might confuse that, though, with the the artificial dragon fire. Well, there's a couple of different... Here's a... A wiki of ice and fire about dragon flame or dragon fires produced by a dragon. The dragon of blah 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 blah. The older and larger the dragon, the more devastating is fire. The high Valyrian word for dragon for Dracarys. We knew that, but um, characteristics. The flames of a dragon grow hotter and fiercer. Oh, as dragon ages. Yes. Flames much older dragons are made. The flames of much older dragons are able to mel- melt steel and stone. A dragon's scale, which, which thicken with age, protect the dragon from fire, although it's not entirely impervious to f- flame. Uh, this sh- yeah, wildfire is said to be a close cousin of dragon right. flame. Right, wildfire. Is hot. What is wildfire? It's oh, that's man-made the green stuff. dragon fire. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, that they destroy King's Landing with. Yeah. I mean, either way, yeah, uh, sun flare, sun fire, whatever. Yeah. Is a young dragon. Yes, very young. Um, Viserys and Melis are both older dragons. Yes. So they would probably be better at withstanding dragonfire in general. Which we notice because Sun Sunfire is taking a lot of damage. Yeah. He's not experienced in war. Neither is King Aegon. And then fighting Princess Renes, who is Renes, who is uh, a very much experienced dragon rider and fighter <laughs> yeah the only like advantage that Aemon and Viserys has Vagar has is the size yeah because that's Vagar the is biggest huge. dragon right yes someone else flew that before though uh yeah um Bela's mother right so why does he have it now because when she died yeah. uh when they were kids um no one claimed Vagar, oh. who was like lying on the beach, and I think it's right. after the funeral oh, when they're he still at up the. On it. Yeah, 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 he yeah. just claims it, and Bela or her sister, one of them, gets really angry, which is like, "Oh, I was supposed to have that dragon after my mother." Right. That was my right. Yeah, but you didn't claim it, so Aemon's just like, "Fuck you, it's mine now." Yeah. And I mean, the dragon just accepted him, so. I think yeah. there's one more that's supposedly that big, but it's one of the wild ones that isn't claimed. Yeah, or the one that we saw in the end of the last season, the giant one in the cave. Oh right, that we still don't know. When the fuck are we going to see that one? Is that one? Yeah. <sighs> that might be the wild one I'm thinking of, though. Yeah, maybe it could be the same one. Maybe we don't really know. Yeah. Uh, but then the actual issue is because. We see Aegon and his dragon start to fall. Yeah, they crash. And falter. Uh, They do crash eventually. I don't remember if it's Aemon's last attack that does that, or if it was just some random attack. Maybe it was Aemon's last attack that did it. Uh, 
So I thought, that's the thing though. I thought Eamon might let Renise get away with it, but he doesn't. No, so I'm what? confused if he was like, fuck it, I'll sacrifice my king to be able to damage Renise and her dragon. Or if it was intentional. He was just... Well, obviously he wants, like, he doesn't care for his brother. He thinks it's a ba- he's a bad king, he's a bad person in general. Especially he after, doesn't want to kill him. Esp- oh, he doesn't give a fuck. The guy, okay. the guy's a sociopath. <laughs> That's true. Uh, well, no, well, uh, he's very angry. I wouldn't say sociopath. And after last episode, when he uh, embarrassed him in the brothel, uh, you know, I, I, you know, and, and and the way he rules, he obviously has no respect for him. And neither no. should you. He's the worst of the kids. Yes. Um, in that regard. So and I mean he is next in line, I suppose, if Aegon dies. I mean he hasn't declared his because he has a daughter still, uh, King Aegon. Yeah, but she's like what five, three if even. Yeah, yeah. She can't rule. No, but can she? And and can if... they do the thing they did with um with uh, uh Rhaenyra that like when when you come of age you're allowed to rule. No matter, like... Sure, but then then, then, Aemon will still rule until she is, like, 18 or whatever. Won't the queen's rule until she's 18, then? Who's the queen? Helena? Queen Alicent and Helena. But Alicent is just a queen mother. Sure, but she's still listed as Queen Alicent. Yeah, but that's... Helena was not even in this episode, by the way. No. Uh, <laughs> Helena is obviously not fit to rule. No. Um, and and Alicent is not in a ruling position. She has she she, she just has a place at the small table. That's it, the small council. I guess, yeah. Uh, they they need an actual ruler, a, a regent, until yeah, whatever the kid is, you know, uh, old enough. And that would be Aemon. I'm, I guess, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Or if I mean. Or, you know, because of call, this is Game of Thrones, so they, they would like, no, actually, Alison shall rule in her absence. And then yeah. they would, let's put it to a vote then, and then they would vote in Aemon anyway. Probably. Yeah. So, but Cold was not in on that plan. He obviously wanted Aegon to still be king. Yeah. That was Aemon's own plan. Yeah. Yeah, because he wasn't even there. And I mean, te- technically, technically, Aemon wasn't there. He he must have sh- he showed up afterwards. So so what what Cole's original plan was, I don't know. No, no, Cole's original plan was to have Prince Aemon and his dragon come in and swoop finish it quickly. That's but, why he should shut up the signal flares. Yeah, no, yeah, but but Aemon wasn't there when they got to Rook's Rest. He was still at the at King's Landing. Sure, but a dragon's flight is faster, so. So his, the plan was... They've been probably been been commu- communicating through pigeons or whatever. Sure, ravens. Yeah, I, ravens. I guess. <laughs> I guess. I guess. Because uh, I think that's... When, in the beginning of the episode when they have that small council meeting and Aemon and Aegon are talking in High Valerian to confuse everyone else, Aemon is more or less like convincing Aegon that we're gonna take Rook's... 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 Rook's rest. Rook's rest, yeah. Uh, we're not gonna go for Harren Hall, even though you want Harren Hall, because there's nothing there. There's another point to taking Rook's rest. Yeah. He's like, fine, whatever, do it. And that's when they're like, okay, we have a, we have approval for our plan, even though we we're gonna do it either way. Yeah. Because yeah. Aemon and Cole has been have been like plotting in secret, making war plans for a while now. We know that. Yeah. Because they don't, they, they, they know that that Aegon doesn't know anything about war. Yeah, and and, and they don't and care like what Alicent, the other ones are saying. <laughs> and like Alicent says, you you should just you should just do your part, which is nothing. Yeah. Because because in this case he is a figurehead, nothing yes. more. He's a symbol. <sighs> um. By the way, I I I I never do this, but I was looking for the dragon fire thing. And um, there were so many Reddit. I almost never get when I search for something when I Google something. I almost never get Reddit links, but there were so many Reddit links for this, <laughs> and I hate I hate Reddit. But now I clicked uh, it, so yeah. yeah. I mean, Reddit is like 
worse than 4chan for me. I fucking hate Reddit. It's personal, partly, but still. Um, <laughs> but I just, I just happened upon because there was a link from the Dragonfire thing. There was a link to something called Best Episode Ever, House of the Dragon, which is on the subreddit House of the Dragon. Um, okay. And someone here, someone, I don't know, Episode 4, Season 2, is by far the best episode um, I have ever seen for me. Well, terrible, terrible. Terrible English, terrible. but we know what you mean. It even, this is kind of funny. It even beats Battle of the Bastards. It was amazing. Holy shit. And I didn't watch Wait, that which far, episode is Battle of the Bastards? But I have Bastards. seen the battle scene from Battle of the Bastards. It's, um... Oh, it's when Snow and, um, Fights that asshole... Who cuts off people's dicks and stuff. Yes, yes. <laughs> and he keeps saying, Yes! And they shoot the arrows. And they kill yeah. one of the younger Starks. Yeah, um, the youngest, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and uh, there's that, sh- that that long lens shot of uh, Jon Snow just pulling his sword against and like uh, just uh, the entire field is covered in horsemen um, yeah. or horses with men upon them, not horsemen. It sounds like centaurs. Knights on horseback. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and then there is that long one shot of him like just panically flailing with with. with the battle going on all around him. Oh yeah. Um, and I remember, I remember back when that episode came out. Sorry for for, but whatever. Um, I like I said, I didn't watch Game of Thrones that far. That far. Um, and even when I tried to re rewatch it a couple of years ago, I gave up before that. Jesus Christ. Um, but I remember some friends of mine talking about it, and one of them saying, like, this is the greatest, like, battle scene in all of cinematic history. And I was like, what? And my, my gut reaction was like, no, Game of Thrones sucks. This is the worst one. <laughs> but then I was just like, is there a better action or, like, battle scene in a movie or TV show than that? Like, the way it's shot. Um, I'm, I think... Uh, the only one I can think of, which is uh, mainly because of the impact it has and like the way it's it's color graded, I guess, is from Three Hundred. <laughs> I was gonna say Three Hundred as well. Um, the f- but I don't know if like there's a specific scene in general in Three Hundred that is just. Oh, I, <laughs> yes, there is. I mean, if just just watching it for the first time, I saw it in the cinema, so that helped definitely, but. The first battle at the hot gates, um, you know, when they're 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 pushing them into the water. Let's give them something to drink. Oh yeah. yeah. After that, because they 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 hold their lines to push them off the cliff, and then when they're just stragglers left, you have that like um, like a Super Mario looking scene where they just go and stab all the ones that's left, and it it's yeah. speeds up and slows down, speeds up and slows down, mm-hmm. and this zooms in and out, which was shot with two cameras, which they then later spliced together. Yeah. Um, that scene... Yes. ...is fucking amazing. That was the first time in that movie that my jaw just... Like, I remember it. My jaw literally dropped. It was just like... <laughs> when I saw that. I mean, I sat like that for the rest of the movie. Like That movie is still... The I haven't best. watched it in a while. I though. haven't watched it in a while, but it's so fucking good. Um, and I mean, in terms of Battle of the Bastards is really cool. It's I'll really give it good. That. It's so good, and it's very well but, shot. But I mean, uh, I guess it is more I'd impactful like if you're if you're involved in the story. But the, the battle, the battle on uh, 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 what was it called? The Fields of Pelennor, the end of Return of the King. The whole no. death. You know what I'd say? I'd say the Battle of the Bastards is the best fight in TV, not oh, in movies or yes. overall. Yes. In TV shows, yes. Definitely, because it is a very cool scene. Yes, and I, I, don't, I can't think of another TV show that has anything remotely as cool as that no. when it comes to, to fighting like that. No. And Game of Thrones never topped that, not even in the end, from what I understand. No, no, they, they don't have those kinds of battles, really. That's one of the few times they have that kind of battle. Yeah. That like, you actually get to see a lot and you have a like a focus on one person. Yeah. A lot of it is like in 
the last episode where you just see like the start of the fight and then you see the aftermath. Oh yeah. Few times they do have some like, but it's just you know it's just ants really. Mm, yeah, you don't get that um, uh, third Focus. person perspective. Yeah. No. Um. So you wouldn't agree with this guy or whatever who says even beats battle of the because this fight it was cool but it was not like this like amazing feat of cinematography or directing or anything it was just no you know, dragons and dragons are really cool but dragons are really as far as dragon fighting go- goes this was oh, the best yeah, one i've seen yeah, so yeah. far <laughs> sure yeah definitely. but it, it didn't have this cinematography to be like the greatest fight ever no no, no it was really this was what this one was uh, very impactful for the story, definitely. And it, it looks cool, obviously, because it's dragons. Yeah. But, like, the grandeur of it wasn't as big as Battle of the Bastards. No. Because that one has more of an an emotional impact more, rather than a story impact. This one has and, a bit... Of, uh, yeah, exactly. You, it has more of an emotional impact. But this one has a little bit of that, though. Sure, sure. But Battle of the Bastards have more of an emotional impact. Yes. Because it comes much later into the show. We have a... Uh, more of an emotional connection to the characters you have I think just before this this is this is just after Jon Snow and the youngest whatever his name is have like reunited since all of the siblings are split up quite early in the show yeah this is the first time he's like oh shit I'm finally seeing my little brother again because they're he's close to his brothers even though he's half mm. st- yeah. stark so, so this it's um it's emotionally impactful that way because he's like yes I finally get to see my I get to save my little brother and then he's literally like one meter away from grabbing him yeah and an arrow hits him in the back yeah and it's like oh fuck you dude you did that just to be mean really <laughs> yeah and that's that's something not just talking about the show in general that's something that I really appreciate with this with this uh with this show over game of thrones game of thrones is so from the very beginning is so mean spirited oh yeah every, everyone just is just like, hating everything yeah and it's like like they just kill people like it's nothing yeah and i guess that is part of oh it's a dark adult fantasy but it just it it also like even not even main characters are safe <laughs> yeah but it, and I'm sure other people have discussed this before, but it just makes it feel like um, some people say, like, oh, that raises the stakes because you never know who's going to die. But it also makes it like a while into that show. And, I, and that's why I lose interest. Like, I don't care for any of the character because well, what's no. the point? If they're just going to die, why should I care? Yeah. I know like there's a 90% chance everyone is going to die. And in the end... 90% Most of the characters of them. have died. <laughs> yes. So then it's like, why Why should I care anymore? The best character dies within the first season, basically. Yeah. Or if it's in the early... No, it's the seventh of the... episode. With three right. episodes left, um, Ned Stark dies. It's yeah. It's like, the one, at least at that point, one reasonable person. Oh, God. Oh, no, he's the only reasonable person throughout the entire fucking show. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> There's no one who has the same kind of level head as him. Everyone else is just... Power hungry and and or st- and or stupid. <laughs> yeah. In this show or so like, far, uh, we haven't really had. Um, there haven't been unnecessary or like there haven't really been cruel killings. No, not like that. Not no. just just to spite someone. There always been um, uh, the accidents, one... so to speak. Yes. Or yeah. reactions. Aemon killing. Uh, Jace. Jace. Yes, that no, was... not Jace. No, Jace Luke. is the one who's alive. Luceris, the other one, right. Luke. Luke. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was some. That was a mistake. And he. Yeah. You, you can even see. And it's also his... reaction to it. Yeah, it's reactionary. Yeah. And you can even see that he's like, oh fuck, when he does it. It wasn't like, <laughs> yes. It was no, like, he's oh, even shit. trying to stop his dragon sort yeah. of. Yeah. But by then he can't. Exactly. Um, the the only... killing of the baby is a reaction. Yeah, and it's and it's. This is not horrible, but it's not a character that we'd really cared about. No, no. <laughs> Sorry. That but was they, the first episode we got to see anything about that character. Exactly. They weren't a character. They were the, they were a MacGuffin to be killed. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible, but I mean that's just the way it is. The it's only a show. it's fine. <laughs> the only the only time it's been like a really cruel act like that was um, after the, the the third episode. Yeah. No. 
Yes. Um, when they kill the gold cloak, or we suppose that Aegon beats the gold cloak to death in the prison. Oh, yeah. Um, but also understandable because he's a child killer, so... Yes. Uh, and then when they hang all the rat catchers just to, to, to get one of them. Yeah. That was like, okay. But it, but uh, it serves the purpose to, first of all, show that Aegon is a very reactionary king, which is not a good thing. Um, And also to, yeah, to, to, to build up the cruelty a little bit. Yeah, but I mean, it, it felt it like that happened things several involved, times so. in every episode of Game of Thrones. There was stuff oh, like yeah. that. Because like, King Joffrey would kill anyone he didn't like just because it's fun, more or less. Yeah, exactly. And it was so... Like, Aegon is being cruel at certain points, but he's not cruel in the same degree that Joffrey was. No. Yeah, I remember some sometimes when, like, Joffrey was, like, like he was, like, evil, like, inhumanly evil. Oh, yeah, he's like evil. a supervillain. Uh, yeah, and it wasn't, f- it wasn't fun. It wasn't, like, ooh, it's kind of creepy, yeah. but... Like, no, like everyone around him also has that reaction, but it's like they're too afraid to do anything about yeah. it. Even the hound, who's like ginormous and could literally just strangle him with one hand, is like, I'm not gonna I just I'm just gonna walk away. I don't wanna be associated with you anymore. Yeah. Which makes sense though, because even though a lot of people probably didn't like him, there he had loyal people that so if the hound just cut his head off, you know, he would have twenty other people going for him so sure and that's and that's why no one wants to sacrifice their own life exactly. to kill a cruel king and that's that's why you know a person like can get away with it but it was to the to the point where it's just like it got ridiculous mm-hmm. like uh like uh uh there's like a there's like a scene where he's with two prostitutes um and he wants one of the girls to spank the other one He's like, Haha, yeah. I don't remember what happened. What I think is, I think it's season two, probably. I think so. And he's like, oh, he, you know, a little playful. And he's like, no, 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 harder, harder. And he's like, yeah. oh, okay. And at one point, you know, she start. It's it stops being fun and it's just this uncomfortable. Starts to hurt. Yeah. And then he's like, take this and gives her a fucking fire poker. Yeah. And you know, it has to, like properly. He doesn't want like, her to spank her. her anymore. He wants her to hurt, hurt her, her. He beat and her then, up. Yeah. Basically. And the, the the final, we don't even see the end. Thankfully, but I think he picks up like that giant, uh, like uh, ballista crossbow he has or something, mm-hmm. and like here, use this and like beat her with this. It's like, why? No, isn't he pointing at her and like if you don't beat her, I'm gonna shoot? Oh you? right, but what is it? Oh whatever. It's like this big thing he has to beat. Yeah, or she has to beat her with. And bigger like, stuff and harder stuff. Yeah. And it's like, we know he's evil. What is the point of this scene? I mean, I get it because. <laughs> Obviously, something's wrong with him because he's the yes. he's the product of inbreeding, and between yes. two very conniving people, so he probably came out even worse. And and <laughs> and at least this is how I remember like interpreting it back then was like, so he has two two ladies there ready to go, you know, and he, yeah. you know he's a man, he's a king, so he's he's expected to do things, but then he can't get it up. He can't. So no. so you know in a because we never in a limp like, they rage never... he makes one of them kill the other one. That's one of the things that's never really discussed, but um, he never beds Sansa after they marry. Or even before that. He doesn't even seem interested. But No, he doesn't care. He's not interested in, from... in intercourse. He's just interested in hurting people. But is that because he is unable to? Or is he just fucked in the head? I don't know. That's the thing. They don't really discuss it. That's one of the few storylines they don't discuss in that show. Because no. <laughs> he never then... like, There's never even like a question about him having to have children to have heirs. They don't, they don't start talking about that. Yeah. They have one conversation after the wedding, I think, where he's like talking to Sansa about, well, I guess we have to. And he kind of... He asks her to get undressed, but then he just stares at her and makes her uncomfortable. Yeah, I remember that. To the point where um, the dwarf, what's his name? <laughs> uh, shit, I don't remember. Thailand? Tyrion Lannister. Tyrion? Tyrion. Yeah. Comes in and like rescues Sansa, basically. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, then there's no more. There's no, like, they never talk about him having to have a bunch of children or, or anything. They don't need the like, succession through the throne because they don't care at the moment. Yeah. But they're like 16. 
shouldn't they start trying? <laughs> Considering how fast people die in that world. Yeah, what what sort of like with Aegon in this, I think he was just a plant for Alicent and Otto to really rule or run the kingdom. Sure, but he at least has children. However, with his sister, so I don't know how perfect that is. Yes, children. With Helena his is his sister. Ew. Oh right. Yeah. I forgot about that. Why? I don't know. Well, they, they talk Targaryens. about it being oh. Targaryen tradition at one point when they're still kids. But maybe not with a sister. I will, but <laughs> it's the same reason Jace is betrothed to uh, Bela. Like, yeah, but they're that's cousins. cousins. And that is, even in our world, legal, even if it's frowned upon. So Sure, and it's not good for the genetics. No, it's not great. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, uh, well, at least it's, 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 it's highborn. and Yeah. You saw how hard it was for Renera to uh, find uh, a match that she liked. Yeah. She also ended up marrying like a cousin, though. Yeah. Because he's and now her uncle. No, no, like well, yeah, but for her first husband. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. know. Who disappeared? We still don't know what happened to him. About that, we once again we come back. We return to the shipyard set, which is oh yeah, that's the Riverlands now. That's it's that one set. I was I like laughed out loud when I saw like oh all their scenes are shot on that same set. I I don't even know if the ship has like progressed. No, they're just keep <laughs> keep repairing that ship, and now we see Corliss talk to Alan or whatever his name is. Yeah, Alan of Hull. Yeah, c- c- can you remind me? Because they they kept saying in this season that Alan was the one who pulled Corliss out of the water, but uh, Rayleigh was like. That's not what happened. I'm. What actually happened yeah. with him? I don't remember. We don't. No, I don't think we. And know I don't more. care enough to go back and find out. I don't think we we get to see him anymore, except for those scenes. And this is the first time she's pointing out that hey, you are not the one who pulled him out. You are someone else. Whoa! I'm guessing he's a bastard. I just I just found out. I went to Wiki of Ice and Fire. He's a bastard. He's a Lord Corliss bastard, is he not? Corliss? Yeah. Uh, the sea snake. Valerius. Valerian. Alan of Hull say here. must be Lord Corliss's Oh, you bastard. mean like that? Sure, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, no, but I'm, I'm saying, like, nah, uh, Corliss Valerian um, is uh, at least, you know, the unseen Westeros. Because I'm looking, uh, there's artwork of him. He's white. <gasps> they race. They race swap the character the, once again. It's kind of funny just I to did. get into the politics here. <laughs> Maybe the I don't. I haven't really cared, but I haven't heard anyone complain about you know a bunch of Valerians, technically Targaryens, being black in this show. No. Uh, no one has cared about any, like, oh, this is all a bunch of queens in this one, no kings. No, that you know why? Because it's actually good. It's actually good. <laughs> like we said so, in that. Yeah. No, so we said that in some episodes. In the Star Wars episode, yeah. Star Wars episode, right. <laughs> that, that, the, the progressive politics, if you want to call it that, doesn't matter if the show is actually good. I no. guess if you want to be, like, picky about it, them being dark-skinned could probably be uh, because they don't, like, the Valerians or the... Um, it's kind of funny. The, the original Targaryens, they're the High Valerians, yeah. you know. They're not from Westeros, though. Maybe they aren't. I don't know, I don't know actually. I think they're from the other side of the, the Narrow Sea, where people are darker in the this, in this skin. Yeah. Could be, yeah. Sure, 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 yeah. However, Corliss was born at Driftmark, so he's born in... Sure, in- sure, sure, sure. And the, I don't know where, where they're going with Alan of Hull. I'm assuming exactly. Rene's, uh, Rene's reaction to him is just that, oh, you're a bastard. You're my husband's bastard child. Yeah. Fine, nice to finally meet you kind of thing. Uh, However, she's now dead, so... It doesn't say anything about his... Children. Lineage. Oh. Well, maybe, because technically it's not out yet, so, you know, maybe we'll get more in the next episode. Yeah, Because now that but... Re- Princess Renee's is dead, I'm assuming Lord Corliss and, and his storyline will circle, uh, surround more of the Aelin of Hull. 
Yeah. And the ship, I hope, in general. Because <laughs> I want that ship to be back on sea. So we don't have to watch it being repaired for another few episodes. But that, that's, that's the thing. Like, because the show, like we know, is based on the book Fire and Blood, which was released in 2018. So they know they know what's going to happen. Like, so they should know if, if Corliss has a child. But it doesn't Are say. all storylines based on that book? Uh, could they have just taken inspiration at some point? It just says the show is based on R. R. Martin's Fire and Blood. Along with the novella Prince and the Queen and the novelette, the Rogue Prince. The novelette was so ten pages. And the Rogue Prince, is that Damon? The Rogue... Uh... No. Because they call him the Rogue Prince in season one. The the Rogue Prince. Um oh it's actually it's actually uh like short stories by other uh writers. It's edited oh. by George R. R. Martin, but then it's written by Gillian Flynn, Neil Gaiman, Patrick Rothfuss, Joe Abercrombie, Connie Willis and Scott Lynch, and many more. Um, it's, it's a, it tells the story of the years leading up to the calamitous events of the princes and the queen uh, during the reign of King Viserys the First Targaryen. So it leads it leads up to the beginning of this show. Yeah. So princes and the queen, I'm guessing is that's Alicent and uh, Rhaenyra, I think, or I, I guess. Uh, Either way. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Um. Anyway, yeah. The storyline of, of Alan of Hull and, and Lord Corlys might not be part of those books, though. Alan might be a new... of Hull, as in H-U-L-L? Yeah. Alan of Hull. Alan, yeah. Alan, A-L-Y-N. Yeah. Uh, he, oh, whoa. <laughs> here's where you, here's where you get spoilers because this all exists in books before. Alan Valerian, yeah. born Alan of Hull and later called Alan Oakenfist, was Lord of the Tides, Master of Driftmark, and head of House Valerian. Oh, that we know that. Yeah, but that must be then that he inherits inherits it after Lord Corlys because his daughters are um, maybe. Well, well. He- his only child is dead, is he not? Oh, both of his tri- children are dead. Well, his son is not dead, but they think he's dead, and his daughter is dead. Here it and says, the granddaughters are uh, heirs to other yeah. things, I guess. Yeah, here it says fathers. He has two. He has Lenor Valerian, which is, is Renice and Lord Corliss's son, son, who married Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra and is dead. Yeah, exactly. Officially, they call him... Lenor's son, but rumored, rumored it says here, Corlys Valerian. So, and yeah. mother is Matil- Marilda of Hull, whoever that is. Um, Some. Yeah, he- here it says Alan was a legitimized bastard of dragon seed descent, so he, he. He will be legitimized then in this show, probably. Yeah. Coming from Hull on the island of Driftmark, his brother was Sir Adam of Valerian, that was the guy who saw a dragon rider. Oh, what? Okay. Uh, yeah, anyway, I shouldn't read more. Now we're just speculating on stuff we haven't seen yet. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But that's, you know, because there's not much more that happens in this. We have, like, the big <sighs> the big happening in the end, but that's about it. Yes. And, yeah, Re- Rainey's, um supposedly dies. I mean, she cannot have survived that fall, especially since the dragon literally lands on his back with her True. still on the back. <laughs> the way she accepts her fate is just like, no, if she survives that, that's dumb. Yeah. If they wanted to hint at her maybe surviving, she should have like made herself fall off on the, on the side or something. Yeah. Um, and kind of going back to the the the, dis- the discussion that really started this, like how you you you. At least for me, I stopped caring about characters when they ever, whenever they, you know, in, in Game of Thrones, because I know yeah. ah, they're just gonna die. Here so far, only one important character has died. I mean, uh, uh, ex- uh, Viserys died, but that was out of old age, so yeah, that's fine. But then, yeah, uh, Luke dies, and honestly, once again, 
not really that super important character, but it was f- impactful. So now, I thought this death with Renee's yes, was impactful. Yes, and that's what I'm going to say. Now, halfway through the first season, we have our first death. Second season. Second season, sorry. First, yeah, <laughs> second season. Um, so it, it, it is impactful because, like, oh shit, this character has been with us from the beginning and has, you know, mm. has made an impact on the show. It's now she dead. has been the Ned Stark, sort of, because she's the only one who's really level-headed about anything, if yeah. we're being honest. Yeah, I agree. And since it took this long for an important character to die, it matters. It has impact. Yeah. yeah. It's not every episode. No. no. Even though we had two kill deaths this episode, only one of them was really important. Uh, <laughs> well, for the story... We don't know if Aegon is dead. No, that's true. They they hinted at it, but they haven't confirmed it. So strong, strongly hint at it. Yes, because he died when his when Sunfire crashed. And the way Aemon just walks away. Yes, yeah. and he, <laughs> he picks up the 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 dagger that the is dagger, kind of a yeah. symbol of the king, and also kind of to 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 uh, to reference to what we always talk about once again the cinematography that shot. Mm. With the with the god rays coming down, um, you have Cole kneeling next to the the burning corpse of the the dragon, and you aim and slowly walking away. It's like a fucking painting. Oh yeah. Uh, such a good looking show. Every damn episode just looks so goddamn good. Oh yeah. It feels like it feel it feels like. Every episode is like a movie. Like this, like this is the one we gotta we gotta put all our eggs in this basket now. It's not like ah, eh, this is a filler episode or ah, eh, whatever. We gotta shoot five more episodes in two weeks, so we don't have time. Shot of our shots. It's movie quality for each episode, which yes. Game of Thrones had in the beginning, in my opinion. Maybe it felt like it at least. Now that you're comparing it to this, no. <laughs> <laughs> but when it came out, you're like, oh my god, this is high, like this is high production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We hadn't seen that before, really. No. But I'm I I need to like analyze Cole's reaction because he's devastated. Yeah. That Aegon is dead. Because if you want to be super nitpicky about it, the war is over. They killed the king. Yeah, that's true. Rhaenyra can now claim the throne. Because she she. Holy shit! That's true. Technically, she could. Because if that was that we were fighting over, she won. I, the game yeah, of Thrones, I wonder how they're gonna won. like. He didn't who, die, gonna, like, or step... they're gonna cover up that he died. Yeah, I'm thinking they're covered up. Cause he has to die. Like, <laughs> if they kill Renee's that way, then he has to die too. They can't not. <laughs> That's not fair. We'll see. We'll see. And once again, also. Uh, but then I... is Aemon gonna like t- pick up? And like cover for Aegon, be like, yeah, no, no, he's he's at home. I'm I'm gonna lead the armies now. Probably. And is that gonna like put a thorn between him and Alicent more? Well, he's already. Like, is is Alicent gonna approve of that, or is she gonna try and fight for like, oh, you know what? Maybe it's Rhaenyra's time. Fuck it. It's cut our losses. We'll see. I mean, that's what I mean with this being a great once again a great cliffhanger. Yeah, because I want so many, so many questions. And I really want to know. <laughs> yeah, and that one, like even if you know they have the big one, did they actually kill the illegitimate king? Now, like, is the war yeah. over? Uh, yeah. Um, so once again, so excited. Yeah, we'll we'll be back for the next episode. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. yeah yes, <laughs> of course. I just want to ask, do we, like we used to do, because. Um, like, if it hadn't been that, if the ending would have been that all the dragons flew away, this would have been like eh episode, honestly. If someone had to get hurt, someone had, had to die. Something had to happen, you know. Something yeah. big had to happen, definitely. Yeah. I'm sad to. See, I, I, I. There's two things though that I have to complain about in this episode. Number one, in the last ten minutes, we had like fade to black five times. Yeah, I know. I thought the episode, episode was over. Was like, and uh, I checked this. It was no. only six uh, minutes. No. Left. Oh, I was like, yeah. Oh shit, it's over. Oh no, it isn't. Yeah. And they kept doing it. I was like, come on, stop it. That was dumb. Yeah. I and know. then I really, really, really kind of wanted Renee to just be like, ah, I'm done here. I'm gonna fly off. But as soon as she went over the castle, I just said, 
and go. And then yeah. Vega just came out of nothing and swallowed her, basically. <laughs> um, God damn it. I knew it, but I didn't want to believe it, you know? It's, fu- it's funny, though, because they mentioned just before the battle really starts, uh, um, Rhaenyra talks to J- uh, her son. Yes, Jace. Jace. And and says like you know when my 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 father you know talked told me I was going to be queen you know it's not just you know that you rule the seven kingdoms, we need to unite the seven kingdoms against a common threat. And he told yeah. me the story of the, about the song of ice and fire, yeah. which is obviously that you know the seven kingdoms need to be united when the night king comes, the yes. the White Walkers, because they're so dangerous. Which is so funny that which is <laughs> I'm going to rag on Game of Thrones, but. <laughs> that they they hinted at that the the coming of the White Walkers for so long, and, and but it wasn't until like the last s- season and a half or something that they kind of united against them. It was just com- continuous war for five seasons. But it has to do a little bit with with like in this one that the the rulers have always kept that information kind of secret. Why would they do that? I don't if know. It's, a thre- it's the same reason, like if it, it, but if it's a, if it's a threat that you know could could topple seven kingdoms unless they all unite, wouldn't it be prudent then to tell people? So like it this would. Is why but we Viserys need to unite. didn't even tell Alicent the proper thing. He just whispered half of it to her as he was dying. Well, he was, like she didn't know the full story. I guess. But why not tell your wife? Yeah, it's weird. He told his daughter because he believed that she would be the next ruler, so she would have to carry this and uh, and, and tell her heir eventually. Yeah. Because they don't know when it's going to happen either, so I don't know. Yeah, no, I think it's stupid. They should just... That should be common knowledge. <laughs> but then... So everyone but then, can just but prepare I, for it. Well, I guess it's the same reason... Uh, you know, you know wh- why why governments keep secrets. It's, it's also not to create panic, because then everyone will no, live like, in fear. Like it, your council it, should know at least. Yes, exactly. But you maybe you don't tell the people; they don't have to know. No. <laughs> sure, they can go on unless it's close enough. Then droning sure. through <laughs> their pointless lives. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyway. Uh, but I, I I like that he that she told um, Jace about that. Like that that yes. that's why this is important. Uh, exactly. That we need. We need. Like we need to have a Targaryen on the throne. Uh, uh, yeah, be able uh, to unite the kingdoms uh, to fight this common threat. Yeah, eventually. And a, a good leader. Yeah. Not not this like where you know there's infighting. There needs to be yeah. someone who can actually lead seven kingdoms for when that time comes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not Aegon. <laughs> No. no. However, the Mad King will be a Targaryen, so it's someone. Yeah. Who gets killed by the King Slayer in the beginning of Game of Thrones, or just before Game of Thrones? The Mad King is Aerys the Second Targaryen. Yeah, exactly. So it's someone's kid. It is Jaehaerys Targaryen's son. Jaehaerys. The fuck is Jaehaerys? Jaehaerys the Second. Tar- Jaehaerys the Second Targaryen. Who is the son of Aegon the Fifth Targaryen? Okay, so it's a long way down the line. <laughs> Aegon the Fifth um, is the son of Makar the First Targaryen, who is the son of De- Daeron the Second Targaryen. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, who is? Th- oh, who is the father? No, it's Aemon, not Aemond. Damn it. Who is the son of Aegon the Fourth Targaryen, officially, but rumored to be the bastard, I suppose, then, of Aemon, not Aemond. Uh, or Aemon, because Aemon. Uh, no, but the fourth, so we're, we're still like a couple right. of generations off here. Who's Aegon the Fourth? Oh, it's a fat guy, at least in the picture. Uh, Aegon, <laughs> the, we're, we're... Aegon the Unworthy. <laughs> Um, he because we're on Aegon the Second. We are right. Yeah. Yeah. His father there is Viserys the Second Targaryen. Viserys the Second. 
Viserys the first was Aegon's father, Aegon the second's father. And, so ooh, oh wait, wait, Viserys. wait. Okay, so now Viserys the second is the son of Daemon Targaryen, which I'm guessing is oh. yeah, the brother of King Viserys the first. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I wonder that so, he has so another mad, child. The Mad King, in direct descent now, does not it's come from, from Aegon. It comes from Daemon. Yeah, it comes from <gasps> it comes from from the Targaryens, not the High Towers. Either, well, they only that was only the line of fathers. We don't know who the mother is to each of these. Oh, uh, that's true. Yeah, I didn't go through the. Mother. So either Daemon and Rhaenyra has a child, an actual child who survives <laughs> and isn't half dragon and dies. Yeah. Um, or he births another child with some other woman. Births, that's not the word. Produces another heir child with another woman. Viserys the second, well, mother is Rhaenyra Targaryen. So it's Daemon's and Rhaenyra's child, Viserys the second. So he. Then I guess they're gonna have a child. They're gonna make up in the end of this season or something. So now we have the show <laughs> spoiled. This is why you shouldn't look at this stuff when it's based on. Yeah, books. I don't know why you did. Well, I mean... I'll oh my it. god, that also means that Jace is gonna die. Yeah. Fuck. Suppose. You know what? Let's stop here. <laughs> Before we ruin anything else. And we're also at the hour mark, yeah, so... Yeah, we should end. Yeah. But then at least we know that the Mad King comes from the real Targaryens, so to speak. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Which makes sense, because in reading and all that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Thanks so much for listening. <laughs> Uh, we'll be back next week. Don't forget to check us out on patreon.com slash don't make a scene. Um, we have released our uh, early over there. Even even for, I think for everyone, at least as long as you're like in on the uh, like free, free tier or $1 tier, you can actually listen now early to our uh, summer special summer episode. Special? Yeah, which comes out this Saturday for everyone else. Nice. Um, so check that out. Mm, but until next week have a good one bye, bye.